What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Corpse Party Book of Shadows. In the last episode, Komida fell in front of our faces. A lot of you guys, actually, it was really funny. A lot of people from Twitter, a lot of people that maybe haven't even been watching the series dropped in to leave a... Wait, is that Komida in the thumbnail? Uh, comment, which was really funny. And before we do get into this um, episode, I did want to point out something that I didn't really expect, but it really kind of touched me a little bit. I want to give a little shout-out to Faye Phantom, who has totally unintentionally been giving me a little bit a little positive ego boost throughout this whole um, playthrough. I know that like this playthrough in particular, especially when compared to something like Dong and Rampa on my channel and whatnot, isn't getting anywhere near as much views or as much activity and such and doesn't have as strong of a fan base. So it is a little bit difficult sometimes when I upload videos and you know it's like 10, 12 views in the first like day or so and you know over time maybe 30 or 40 people will watch them and the comments are relatively Thin, and not to say that the people who do watch and don't comment are valueless, right? But it is always nice to have a conversation, right? I like the aspect of playing a game with people, and I know that having an audience, right? Having people watch as I play through the game as well, as we play through the game together, is really fun. But it's also really cool to have discussion with other people, to talk about the game with other people. And so I wanted to give a little shout out to, to Faye for really having really thought-provoking, um, deep comments on a lot of these episodes, even to the point where she noticed that I totally forgot about the alternative chapter um, endings for chapter two. And when someone notices that like something is amiss from what I would normally do, it is actually looking forward to that and searching for that. Um, I don't know, it makes me feel good. So, so thanks, Faye. I know you're not even like going out of your way to like try to do that, and that's probably the better uh, on your end, but yeah, just wanted to say that before hopping into it, and that I will get those Chapter 2 alternate endings up sometime in the near future. We'll see. Pro probably in a couple weeks after my huge, like, block exam. But regardless, let's, uh, let's keep chatting. Amplified and distorted by the ghost story, these images gradually darken my mood. Maybe I was traumatized by the events I'd experienced, or maybe I was just frustrated and needed to lash out. I don't know. But for the first time ever, things have become decidedly uncomfortable between the two of us. Work through it, you can do it. Okay, well, this is me. Right. Awkward. Awkward. <laughs> Shishido. He called out my name as I briskly walked away. I didn't really know why I was so angry or confused, but I did notice that his voice was tinged with concern. If anything should happen, feel free to contact me. I think this is kind of like a, yeah, we might not be on the same wavelength right now, but I am still concerned and care for you, so like... If something does happen, know that, like, even though we're not on the best terms, I am there for you. Or at least I'm, ho I'm hoping that's what that is. I considered turning back for a second, but changed my mind and pushed forward in a huff, leaving him behind. Tadaima. I'm home. Tadaima. Okay. Yui, welcome back. Yeah, now we got to hear from the mother about all the events of the day. Greeting me at the door, my mother wore a somber expression. I could tell right away that something had happened. I stared at her with scrunched eyebrows for an awkwardly long time before she eventually reluctantly opened her mouth to speak. About that old woman from this morning. Yeah? What? The hospital contacted me. She passed away a short while ago. No. Yikes, that's not good. I'm so sorry. You need to stay focused on tomorrow's exam right now, though. I mean, admittedly, that's, that's shocking, but it's not like she was our grandma or something like that. Uh, it's not like Yui-sensei really has much of an attachment to this old lady. <laughs> so, 
We should put this unpleasant beh unpleasantness behind us. I'm getting a new start now, so how about you go get changed? Okay, I'll be in my room. I'll call you. I watched my mom work her way back to the kitchen. Yikes. Then wriggled out of my shoes. My mood had darkened even more, understandably so. Tsukasa's attitude was bad enough, but for that old woman to have died. Returning to my room, I couldn't muster the energy to do anything but collapse into my chair and sprawl out on the desk. I know the feeling, you sensei. That's exactly what we want to be remembering. <laughs> the last thing the old woman had said to me echoed again and again in my mind. I began wishing I had taken her more seriously. I wonder why she died, how she died, etc. I should have accepted the paper doll and thanked her. Obviously, you know, 2020 hindsight, right? You know, given that she died, you don't want to be the last, like, experience she had in life, especially when it was, like, a negative one or you didn't really take her seriously or something like that. I should have reassured her I wouldn't go to Heavenly Host Elementary. I mean... The place didn't even exist anymore, for goodness sakes. I was exhausted. It was a heck of a day and I no longer even had the energy to move. I needed to change out of my school clothes, but... Still sprawled out over the desk, my eyelids drooped and closed. I was out. And now do we wake up at Heavenly Host? Darn it, we're still not back at Heavenly Host, guys! I awoke with a start. Admittedly, like, I am, you know, Yui Sensei is a really cool character, arguably one of my favorite characters, now that we've had this kind of character depth. I think in the first game, the first game cuts, or sells a lot of characters short. I really liked Seiko in the first game, Naomi gets some decent development, though she's not, like, a crazy, um, like, unique character, per se. I think, I think actually my first playthrough, uh, or my playthrough of the first game, Faye actually said it really well, that Naomi acts as a foil to kind of highlight the unique aspects of other characters really well, but isn't actually that interesting herself. Um, whether you agree with me or not, like, no, no, no need to worry about it, like, I still like her as a character and everything, but Ayumi, um, a bit of Yoshiki, but, like, Mayu, Yui-sensei, Morishige, like, they all kind of just just appear and like exist and then are no longer really um, that relevant. I mean like Morishige is like a creep, Mayu splatters and Yui Sensei is like, oh my goodness, I'm such a great teacher, but like we don't really know much more beyond that. So it's been really cool to get to know in particular Mayu and now Yui Sensei um, in this game thus far. It's really helped shape them out as characters, probably making them more likable than the characters I've already come to know from the first game. But regardless, the air in my room had gotten noticeably or notably cooler and I was shivering. <laughs> I must have fallen asleep. Rubbing my eyes, I glanced at my clock. The needles indicated it was 6.45. 6.45? Oh, 0.45. It's just past midnight. It's already this late? It was black outside my window, streaked with lines from the still pouring rain. <laughs> sure, hope it's sunny tomorrow. Sunny. For my exam. The weight of what the next day held for me came rushing into my mind. That's going to help you sleep. I'd practiced the interview process with my teachers quite thoroughly, but I was still really nervous. Interviews really are a practice or like a skill, you know. I um, Actually, for med school, I'm training to be on like the the admissions crew that interviews incoming like student applicants applicants and stuff and I mean there's a lot to look for there's a lot about presentation there's a lot of subtlety it's not just about how you answer and everything honestly the amount of pressure is really unfair to the applicant and I don't really like the process in and of itself and that it favors a certain type of applicant but maybe that's also because those sorts of skills are necessary and especially in fields where you are interviewing for something where you're going to be working with patients or people and you really need to have those interpersonal skills um, yeah, I, I feel bad for introverts in a lot of competitive processes that involve interviewing and such. And that's as myself an introvert, um, where, you know, whether it's like rushing a selective living group or at a lot of universities like frats or sororities or something like that, where you kind of have to play this social game and be good at this social game. Um, which is oftentimes exhausting for introverts. Not that introverts are bad at socializing or even don't like socializing, it's just that it gets a lot more tiresome um, 
and for extroverts and obviously exceptions you know stereotypes etc talking about the average not like everyone so just qual or disclaimer disclaimer <laughs> okay i need to make sure i'm ready for tomorrow there was still a little time before dinner my mind swimming i decided i'd take this opportunity to clean out all the notes and textbooks i wouldn't need tomorrow from my bag i love this uh what is it like productive procrastination it's like I've got things to do, so I might as well, like, put off the things I need to do but don't want to do with other things I need to do but probably aren't as important. Let's see. Student ID needs to stay, obviously. Handkerchief and tissues. <laughs> Gotta make sure I don't forget my exam ticket. Oh, and my pen case. I actually got a pen case while I was in Japan. It's a Super Danganronpa 2 pen case. It's got Monokuma on the front and everything. When I eventually do my room tour, when I feel comfortable with how my room is, it's almost done, but it's not exactly where I want it to be just yet. I'll show off everything I got. My, my super weedy room. Huh? Oh, crap! Where's my pen case? Admittedly, like, it's not the end of the world, Yui Sensei. Grab a, grab a few pencils, grab a couple pens, an eraser, and, like, you're, you're kind of good to go. Did I leave it at school? My face suddenly went pale. Really, I shouldn't have been too concerned over writing utensils. We had tons at home. Ah, that's right, that's right. But that case held the pencil that Skasa had given me for guaranteed success on my exam. I have to go get it. You know, I'm, I'm going to say this isn't the best idea. This probably isn't the best idea, Yui Sensei. It's what, almost one in the morning? It's raining out the night before your huge exam, and you're thinking of running back to the school to get a pencil case or a pen case? Can't really say I agree with this decision. Your mom's still awake? Hey mom, I forgot something at school, so I'm gonna run back for a second. Wait, what? Was that a six, not a zero? I'm so confused. What? But dinner's almost ready. Okay, it must have been 6.45 actually. I thought I... Confused. Okay, so disregard half of what I just said about like how late it is and things being important and productive procrastination and everything. I hope it was at least entertaining to listen to, despite my being off about the timing. That's okay, I'll come right home. So, Alright, it's still raining though, so be careful. I feel like the old lady was referring to like this like visit to this school. Not necessarily the first one. I will! Maybe it's because she went earlier that she forgets the pen case that makes her go back that eventually draws her to Evelyn That pencil was one thing I absolutely needed to bring with me to the test. And so, without hesitation, I ran back down the road to school. I was sprinting as close to full speed as I could get, as I could get without slipping in the downpour. All the while, the numbers on my bedroom clock ran through my mind. Okay, that, that does look more like a 6 than it does a 0, but I just thought it didn't really make sense to be 6.45 based on what she was saying and everything, but regardless, 6.45. And if Kana's story was to be believed, Yoshie haunted the school building at 7. Ooh. Uh-oh. Are we going to run into the school? Or like the school ghost or whatnot? As soon as I... Interrupted Yui Sensei chatting. As soon as I arrived at the gate, I glanced up at the large clock adorning the schoolhouse. It was now 6.55. Are you going to try and like run in and make it out before 7 o'clock to avoid the haunting? Yoshie after school. I went over the whole scenario in my head again, as best as I could recall it. After classes, on a rainy day in October, 7 at night. Did 
Did that old woman somehow know this would happen? I, I'm going to take my bets on yes, however crazy it is. Uh, get a hold of yourself, Yui. It's just some old made-up story. A camp, some old campfire tale. I am always impressed by the, or amused by some of the translations in, in this game. Skuri Banashi is like a like made-up story. Not, not necessarily like an old campfire tale. It's probably like a very literal, like, yes, it makes sense when you think about it, right? Like an old campfire tale is like something that's, you know, talked about but not true. Kind of like a folk story or like a, like a legend-esque or like a tale or some, something like that, but it just sounds a little awkward. I was talking to myself, reprimanding myself in an effort to quell the fear that was welling up in the pit of my stomach. Do you guys ever talk to yourself? It's something that I actually do occasionally. Um, a lot of times when... I need to really kind of organize my thoughts or establish like one thought in my head over something else that's maybe like competing with that within my head. I'll like say it out loud or I'll talk myself through a process just because like I get excited about it or something like that. Um, and I know that a lot of people associate it with like insanity or something like that. But I think it's uh, a lot of times like really helpful for organizing thoughts um, in my opinion. There wasn't a soul to be seen on the grounds. By this time, the students had all gone home. I wondered if any teachers were even still around. <laughs> Fortunately, the lights were all still on, and it was bright enough that I felt confident I could make it to the classroom without freaking out. <laughs> okay, I'll just run up, grab the case, then come right back down. That doesn't look very well lit. I folded up my soaked umbrella and left it on the rack by the entrance, then changed into my indoor shoes. Then, entering the brightly lit hall, I took another look around. <sighs> Guess I was right, nobody's here. My deep sigh echoed through the deathly silent corridor. Ordinarily, the din of another st the din of other students would drown out noises like this. The din of other students. I don't know if I even really know what din means in this case. I mean, I, I can, from like context, figure out what it's probably supposed to mean, but I don't think I've ever heard the word din used outside of like the goddess from The Legend of Zelda. But every little sound was coming through crystal clear at this late hour. I need to hurry. It's almost seven. I quickly beeline toward classroom 3A. Or is it 34? 34, it looks like. Uh oh. Uh oh. The brain is filling in the gaps. The fear is setting in about that old woman from this morning. She passed away a little while ago. And so the anxiety rises. It's said that one day after school, a female teacher who had been patrolling the ground slipped and fell down the stairs and died. <laughs> the accident took place on a rainy October day just like this one and occurred just after 7 at night. And supposedly, Yoshie still appears on days like this. Everyone aware that she died at Heavenly Host these many years ago. She now walks the halls of Kisaragi Academy, believing them to be her own. What are you thinking Exactly. Jeez, what the heck is wrong with me? Why am I letting this bother me so much? Tsukasa was right. I shouldn't dwell on this. It's easy to let your, your mind play tricks on you. Lightning flashed and thunder resounded with impeccable timing. I jumped in spite of myself. The human brain does have a tendency to, to dwell and focus on negative things. It only makes sense from like an evolutionary standpoint, right? Like, 
if you pay attention to those that are potentially enemies or less likely or people you can't trust, you're more likely to stick with those you can and as a result probably survive more effectively. If something is more threatening, more dangerous, obviously you're going to want to pay heed to that and those that aren't able to do so or don't do so as frequently are probably going to die more often. So it's just kind of hardwired into our brains. I just need to hurry up these stairs, grab the pancakes and get the heck out of this creepy building. No ghost should show up in a well-lit building like this, right? And even if they did, they wouldn't be very scary under all these bright lights. I absolutely need that pencil for tomorrow's test. Yeah, you better be sure of that given you're already here now. It's my good luck charm after all, and it's from Tsukasa-kun. I picked up the paces. I continued to head straight for room 3-4. What is that sound? What is that sound? No. No. What is that sound? What was that? That sounded like a zombie. What? The middle school is already pitch black. I guess there really is no one else around right now. And clearly Yui since they didn't hear that. So like obviously that's to build like dramatic tension. Given that like the the, the player knows it's not going on but the character doesn't. Oh no. Oh no. And this hallway feels longer today than it ever has before. Was it always like this? Can't imagine I'd ever be on time if it were. I continue my brisk walk down the impossibly long hallway toward my goal. Jumping every now and again whenever another thunderclap sounded. Kisaragi Academy was comprised of both a middle school and a high school, and this evening it really felt like it was flaunting its massive size. Didn't help that my classroom was in the high school wing, which happened to be past the middle school, making it seem that much further away. <laughs> when a building that's usually so full of life goes completely quiet, it becomes such a lonely place. I swear I can hear every drop of rain. I was focusing on the scant few sounds around me as I paced down that long, lonely corridor. Then, all of a sudden, oh man, it's a ghosty ghost. I heard a faint noise as of someone playing an organ. That was just my imagination, right? I mean, it had to be. This is... Spirit Yui Sensei, go! Go, go, go! There's no way anyone would still be here practicing, right? I took a deep breath trying to calm my nerves. It was probably the sounds of the rain, wind, and thunder mixing together. It just sounded like an organ, that's all. I know that when you're tired, especially, your your brain will start to take sounds and basically like per personify them. Is that what it is? Personify them. Um, basically, attribute them like human-esque sounds or sounds you're more familiar with, and it's uh it's very weird when it, your mind plays tricks on you that way. I've spent a little bit too much time up late at night, very tired, for for my own experience. I was convinced. I kept walking, but then. I'm just waiting for the like the sprite of this ghost or zombie to appear on screen. I heard the same noise again. Oh. This time much more clearly. It was unmistakable. No. No way. I was paralyzed with fear. My heart was pounding as if it were struggling to break free of someone's sinister grip. <laughs> it's probably just some devoted member of the band or a teacher who's working late. It, it's gotta be that. Thinking about it, I vaguely recalled someone mentioning an upcoming performance by the Wind Instrument Club. I guess an organ would qualify, would it? For those of you that are more musically inclined, what, like, class of instrument does the organ fall under? Is it percussion like the piano, or is it wind? because of like the pipes and such? I, I don't know. Somebody must have just stayed late to practice, that's all. <sighs> I can't get that darn ghost story out of my head. 
ghost stories. Best anime ever. I took another deep breath and tried, again, to calm my overly jittery nerves. Yep, anything can be scary if you think it is. I had heard that if you let your imagination run too wild, fear can even make you see things that aren't there. And my imagination was most definitely running wild. I'm almost there, I might as well sprint the rest of the way. I decided to dash toward my classroom so I could get out of this hall as quickly. <sighs> Sorry, as I keep talking about late night stuff, it is it is past midnight for myself and it's getting late. I'm tired, <laughs> but get out of this hall as quickly as possible. Ooh, awfully dark. Finally reaching that familiar door, I swiftly opened it and flicked on the lights. <sighs> <laughs> the way she said that was so cute. Alright, I made it. Now I just have to be absolutely certain I don't leave here without that pen case again. Thanks to all my unexpected pauses to freak out over thunder and lightning, it took me far longer than it should have to get here. It was already well past seven. Seven o'clock, huh? It was the appointed time when the ghost of a teacher was supposed to appear, at least according to the school legend. <laughs> <laughs> no undead educators here. Don't speak too soon. I let out a sigh of relief and relaxed my shoulders a bit. The lights were on both inside the classroom and out in the hallway. Sure, it was still dead silent, but the fear I'd been feeling had completely melted away. Yeah, there's nothing to be afraid of. Seven wonders aren't real. I grabbed the pen case I'd come back for and shoved it in my pocket. Okay, mission accomplished. Mission complete, as Fox would say, or Falco would say. Um, with my long ordeal behind me, more or less, I looked around the classroom and let out another sigh. I'd only ever known this classroom when it was busting or bustling with activity, and thus found its eerie silence and utter stillness to be oddly fascinating. <laughs> Such a strange feeling, being alone in a classroom like this. I got the idea in my head to try doing something I normally wouldn't be able to. Like standing at the teacher's podium and writing on the blackboard. Yui-sensei, you're really pushing your luck. <laughs> Chances like this don't come around too often, after all. To me, the area behind that podium, from which teachers conduct their lessons, was like a sacred space. I dreamed of standing there myself one day and could hardly resist its pull when presented with a rare opportunity like this. Well, no one's looking. To my classmates, this would seem like such a silly, stupid dilemma, but that didn't change the way I felt at the moment. Should I or shouldn't I? Um, we are going to... Decide in the next episode. <laughs> I didn't anticipate um, this sort of a branch coming up, but what do you guys think I should do? I really want to hear your guys' thoughts. Obviously, I'm really curious, and my curiosity is leading me to stand at the teacher's podium. Rationally speaking, I should leave the room because I would say the faster we get out of here, the less likely we are to encounter danger. I think it's just kind of like a probability standpoint thing, right? Like, if we're in this area, the longer we are here, the more likely we are to run into danger if there is danger. Do I actually think there's danger? Given that voice we heard earlier with a uh, zombie-esque voice, there's probably something going on. So we should probably leave the room. But I still want to figure out what's going on with the teacher's podium. So let me know what you guys think, and we will make the decision in the next episode. But until then, this is Movie Night Zero. And this mission is complete.